Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at cost reimbursement for healthcare healthcare providers. This topic is covered in a governmental and not-for-profit accounting, as well as the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to con connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in the playlist, let the world know about them. If they're benefiting you, they might benefit other people as well. This is my Instagram account, this is my Facebook account, and I do have a website. On my website, you are more than welcome to donate if, you, if you'd like to support the channel down the road. Cost reimbursement. What is cost reimbursement? Cost reimbursement is basically when someone, a third party, pay the healthcare provider money okay what do they pay the money for for reimbursement what type of reimbursement maybe reimbursement for equipment computers a fixed asset so on and so forth so allowable cost are certain third party such as medicare medicare insurance company that would reimburse healthcare provider for certain cost and those costs are not typically billed to patients so when the comp when the healthcare provider buys um, like an MRI they're not gonna build the customer for that okay so what's gonna happen is those costs some of these costs they get reimbursed by either Medicare Med Medicaid or the insurance company like depreciation on equipment computers so on and so forth so what would the company have to do what would the healthcare provider have to do well they have to prepare cost to get reimbursed so in order to be reimbursed you have to tell them what what did you incur in terms of cost and this report will this document will summarize the allowable cost for a period of time and this is a big deal for health healthcare providers for hospitals and physicians with with with, the, with medical operation why because they will need to be reimbursed so basically this is sometimes the lifeblood of the healthcare provider okay and this report is could be filed quarterly yearly monthly so it used to be filed yearly then quarterly then monthly because healthcare providers they, they will need to be paid on a regular basis this way they can keep on operating so the question is when we prepare this cost report what accounting basis do we use interesting well each third party uses its own accountant basis called the cost report basis so simply put if you're going to be dealing with blue cross Blue Shield. Well, each one of them, they're going to have a different accounting basis. Therefore, your cost report will have to comply with this. Simply put, if you have um, eight different uh, providers, eight, eight different parties reimbursing you, you have to prepare eight different reports because each one of them would require you to prepare the report based on their cost accounting basis. So what does it mean cost report basis, not cost accounting, cost report basis? It means the basis that they use, and you have to comply with this. Well, think about the cash basis, the accrual basis. Well, we have many bases, the modified accrual. Well, cost report basis is a basis that is that is that is uh, designed or administered by that insurance company, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and you have to follow their basis. Therefore, there are differences between cost incurred on the income statement and cost reimbursed by the third party. Why? Because the way you re report your cost report is different than you prepare your financial statement. Okay? So we have cost incurred, which is financial statement basis, whatever financial statement, usually it's accrual, and cost reimbursed, which is the cost report basis. What does that mean? It means there's a difference between the two. There's a permanent and timing differences. Well, let's talk about those differences that arises because we have to prepare our financial statements different than the cost report basis. Actually, the difference is here. The difference between those two. Those two, right there. I'm going to draw the line, okay? We have what's called permanent differences and timing or temporary. Timing means temporary. Temporary means they would reverse down the road. Permanent means they will never reverse. So permanent differences, as I just told you, those differences will not reverse in the future. Okay, so the cost you report on the cost report basis will never equal to the financial statement basis. So simply put, this is a permanent difference. And the good news about permanent difference, just like in deferred accounting, deferred income taxes, we don't have to record them. We don't have to worry about permanent differences. An example of permanent differences is the insurance company reimburse you 60% for depreciation expense. So 40% goes, uh, 40% is unreimbursed okay and it's a permanent difference there's a few typos here let me just fix them real quick 
Andri inverse, and this is a permanent difference. So this is an example of a permanent difference. All right. Timing differences, as I told you, timing difference is the same as temporary difference. Now, if you are studying about those differences, temporary and uh, permanent, you could always go to my intermediate accounting and I have a full lesson about timing differences, temporary as well as permanent. But here we're not talking about financial uh, income for accounting for income taxes. Here talking about the cost report. Timing differences, they, will, they, they differ, but in the future they would reverse. Uh, timing differences are recorded. Why? Because they would they are going to they are going to reverse. An example will be the hospital insurance might be using the straight line, um, straight line depreciation method. The insurance company uses the two hundred double declining method, double declining rate. Well, it doesn't matter. In some years, in some years, for example, year one we may take ten thousand, in year one we may take twenty thousand. So simply put, let me just show you what the, what do I mean by this? So in year one. We have the uh, hospital and we have the insurance company. The, 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 the hospital might take only 10,000 worth of depreciation. The insurance company may take 15. In year two, the company may take only 10,000. The insurance company may take eight. And in year three, the, the hospital might take 10,000 and the insurance company might take seven. So notice, in total, they're equal to 30,000 over a three-year period, but every year they differ. Every year they differ. In some years, the hospital had more depreciation, uh, less depreciation, for example, in year one, and more depreciation in year three. So this is, the, this is what we mean by temporary differences. It means overall, they equal over the long period. So how do we compute, how to record the timing difference. Here's the formula. We'll look at revenue recognized for financial statement basis, and we subtract that from revenue reimbursed, basically the, re the revenue that we're going to be reimbursed coming from the cost report. The difference between those two equal to a balance sheet account. Usually it's a liability called deferred revenue. So we'd look at the revenue recognized for financial statements minus the revenue recognized based on the cost report. Again, this is for timing for temporary differences. Okay, the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example to see how this all fits together. Okay, so the hospital records depreciation using straight line method and however in accordance with the term of certain third party reimbursed the hospital using 100 double declining not one hundred dollar one hundred and fifty double declining rate during the year the hospital charged two million dollar of depreciation for the equipment but expect to be reimbursed three million so the way they 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 book their depreciation is the straight line the way they get reimbursed for the depreciation is the double declining rate well how does the how does the hospital record depreciation for them it's straight line debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation basically the straight line now What's going to happen is this. They are going to reimburse them for that particular year, particular year, $3 million. So they will debit a receivable, a third-party receivable, $3 million. We haven't received it yet. They will credit revenue, um, reimbursed revenue. Why reimbursed revenue? Because they, they booked the expense, and now they're getting reimbursed $2 million. And what's going to happen? They have a $1 million deferred, reimbur deferred revenue, which is a liability. Why? It seems, why? Because the... The cost report for that third third party provider, it's gonna use in the double declining. So under the double declining, they're gonna reimburse them for this particular year more than what they actually book. One million dollar more. That one million dollar more is a liability for now called the third reim the third reimbursement liability, which will reverse, which will reverse once they book more depreciation in the in the future, more depreciation than the cost report. Okay? Let's take a look at another example. We have this clinic is reimbursed by Blue Cross Health Insurance Company for 60% of certain allowable cost. Okay, the following item affect the clinic for the year 2016 to 2018. In 2016, the clinic purchased equipment for 60,000. It depreciated over three years using the straight line method. It means $20,000 per year. Blue, Blue Cross reimbursed over three years with the 200 double declining balance. Well, the, here we go. This is a temporary difference. Temporary difference. 
what you use for depreciation is different than what the uh, the third party insurers use for the cost reimbursement. In 2006, the clinic realized $10,000 loss on early debt extinguishment. So basically they bought back their debt and they incurred 10,000. The clinic recognized the debt loss in the year the debt was occurred in 2016. Well, the Blue Cross reimbursed over the life of the, of the debt, which is two years. So you're gonna take the loss in that particular year when you when when the blue cross the way they reimburse you for this loss is over two years now prepare a comparison schedule not compassion comparison comparison schedule comparison schedule between reportable expenses and reimbursable expenses so basically reportable expenses is financial statement and this is cost report basis this is the special accounting method so let's go ahead and start to do so and prepare the journal entries for that matter. So let's first take a look at 2016 reportable expenses. Notice under reportable expenses, this is the financial statement and this is the cost basis, not cost basis, cost report basis, cost report basis, which, this, which is the special method. Okay, the depreciation for the financial statement is 20,000. The depreciation for the reimburse, reimbursable expense is 20 times 20, 60,000 times two third, which equal to 40,000. So notice there's a $20 difference in between. Now we have to look at the other thing. The other, the other things are loss on that extinguishment, loss on that extinguishment. We have the company realize a $10,000 loss. It will be taken in that particular year. Well, we're going to take the loss, the $10,000 in that particular year. Blue Cross, it's going to take this 10,000 and take it over two years. So in year 2016, they're only going to be able to take 5,000. Let's look at the total. For financial statements, we have 30,000 of expenses. For reimbursable expenses, 45,000, which is more. Why? Because why more? Well, although they're not going to reimburse us the full loss on, on that this year, but the depreciation was much higher. So that's why we have more reimbursement times 60%. That's the reimbursement rate. Therefore, amount to be reimbursed. They're going to reimburse us 18. Um, they're going to amount to be reimbursed 27,000 in the reportable expense, which which is the revenue will be 18,000. So we will debit receivable. So this is the amount that they're going to reimburse for us. Because of that, and we incur expenses of 18, that expense becomes a revenue because they are reimbursing it. We credit revenue. And the difference between those two is a temporary difference of 9,000, which will reverse. And I will show you at the end, which will reverse. So this 9,000, if you want to create a T account for deferred revenue, that's a good idea and put their 9,000, that's not a bad idea, put their 9,000, which you will see over 2017 and 2018, this deferred revenue will reverse. Let's take a look at the following year, which is 2017. 2017, the straight line depreciation would still be 20,000. The double declining balance depreciation will be 60 minus 40, which is the book value times two third, which will be 13,333. Notice this year, what we're doing is we're taking more depreciation for SL than the double declining balance. Loss on the debt extinguishment, we already computed all the loss for, this, for the financial statement purposes. Now Blue Cross would say, you can take the other 5,000 of the loss and we re would reimburse you for it, would reimburse you 60% for it. Therefore, amount to be reimbursed for the financial statement, 12,000. Reimbursable expense is 11, 11,000. So they're gonna reimburse us 11,000. We have revenues of 12,000 and the difference between those two is a thousand dollar. Now remember this deferred revenue I told you to create earlier, deferred revenue and we had in there, how much did we had in there? Um, deferred revenue we had in there 9,000. We had in there 9,000. Now of the 9,000, 1,000 already reversed. So we still have 8,000 to go. Okay, now let's look at the third year. In the third year, the straight line is still 20,000 of depreciation, 20,000 plus 20,000 plus 20,000 plus 20,000. Now the double declining balance, remember you have to take, if you take this amount times two thirds, whatever the amount is, you have to 
plug in the amount that's going to give you zero uh, depreciation right because by year three you have to fully depreciate the asset so what's left this is a plug for year three why because you need to depreciate in total sixty thousand in year one you depreciated forty thousand in year two thirteen thousand three 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 what's left is six thousand six hundred and sixty six while well, rounding but you got the point okay so there is no more loss on the debt extinguishment not by the company not by the by the insurance company not by the hospital not by the insurance company therefore the total reportable expenses is twenty thousand we multiply this by sixty percent and the reimbursable amount sixty six thousand six hundred and sixty six so we expect to be reimbursed four thousand our revenue will be our revenue will be uh, twelve so this is the revenue this is the um, this is the uh, uh, reimbursed amount 4,000 and the difference is a debit to a deferred revenue so notice in the prior from the prior example we had deferred revenue of 8,000 well let's go from the beginning we started with 9 we debited the 9 a thousand now we debited the 9 and we debited the third revenue eight therefore the third revenue is zero and this is what i meant to tell you right from the get-go this nine thousand will be reversed so the nine thousand did reverse over the years so let's see what happened over a three-year period over a three-year period we bought an equipment that's worth sixty thousand and we were reimbursed sixty percent of that sixty percent times sixty thousand is thirty six thirty six thousand also we had a debt extinguishment of ten thousand which is over a period of two years we get reimbursed for sixty percent that's also six thousand so thirty six plus six equal to equal to forty four thousand so the total reimbursement we got over a period of three years is forty four thousand well let's see if that's the case year three let me highlight them in yellow Year three, we had re we were promised four thousand. That's four thousand plus eleven thousand. Four plus eleven is fifteen. Fifteen plus twenty-seven. So let's do it. Just make sure we show you the math. Fifteen plus twenty-seven. Fifteen plus twenty-seven equal to forty-two. Did I do? What did I do? Maybe it, maybe it's forty-two, not forty-four. Actually, it is forty-two. I, I did I, I did a, I made a mistake here. So it is forty-two. It is forty-two thousand. Therefore, notice the total reimbursement over a three three-year period is forty-two thousand. It fluctuates between our financial statement expenses and the reimbursable expenses, but over three years, it is forty-two thousand. If you have any questions, any comments about this session please email me if you happen to visit my website please consider donating if you're studying for your cpa exam as always study hard it's worth it good luck and see you on the other side of success